Craig Martell coming to you live from the subarctic where it's light all the time. When I got up, I couldn't see any stars at all. So that's where we are. Uh, spring has uh, started earlier this week. It'll end next week and then we'll have summer. So uh, that's, uh, that's how it is up here. Michael is coming to us from Vegas once again. And where it is already feeling like summer in the 90s, the heat, it just <laughs> bakes you off of the different concretes or tars or whatever that you do. Judith and I went to a pizza place yesterday, and it was going to take 30 minutes for the deep dish. So we walked all over to Target, which is, you know, a few hundred yards away. And it, it was pretty roasty toasty. I got to tell you, it was not pleasant at that moment from, from that. But uh, otherwise, it is still a little bit quiet. We are going into our first day of restaurants having 50 percent capacity it'll be the first oh, time geez. we're doing it 50 so 50 percent. we go we 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 take chances here in nevada not quite as oh. many as over there in the las vegas mayor area <laughs> i'm in clark county that's las vegas proper <clears throat> yeah this we, we're open up here with a bunch of restaurants but only 25 percent capacity and very few opened even though they were allowed to because the uh, ppe requirements and I saw a report today saying 90% of the restaurants cannot comply with the all of the personal protective equipment requirements. You know, masks, sanitizer on every town. Fuck, where the fuck do you buy sanitizer in Fairbanks, Alaska? If uh, once everybody's out, because one of our main restaurant supply stores, we drove by it yesterday, and it was closed and for sale. It's like okay, oh all God. we have all we have left is Costco. So if you can't get your sanitizer at Costco or Walgreens. How do you supply your restaurant? Because it's supposed to be on every table that oh, really? you. Yeah. Yeah. But we have a brewery and a distillery here because if I was those restaurants, I'd be working straight deals because the distillery they went to make hand sanitizer for Alaska. So it's Alaskan. It's Alaskan Jack Daniels uh, ha hand sanitizer. <laughs> so that's what I would actually branding. I would put that shit on the table and not uh, <laughs> and not get any uh, Purell or something, you know, suave and deboner like that. Mm. Debonair, my, my oh yeah, that's it, that's it. I, I don't, friend of mine. Despite the the last name, very very French. Don't do French. So uh, yeah, it's almost it's almost embarrassing. So let me let me ask you something, Craig. Um, we I've had a few conversations with different companies or uh, high level individuals who are aware of twenty books to fifty k, and they're asking me if it's going on, if we're going to have it this year, because a lot of conferences, of course, quit or some of them are now moving it all to next year. Mm -hmm. What's going on that you're aware of with 20 books to 50 K Vegas, 2020 Vegas, 2020. Oh, let me start off with uh, uh, yesterday, day before 20 books of 50 K got a shout out on uh, KDP university's blog. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. So uh, yeah, Larry Martin saw it pop up and he's going to shoot me here. Here's what it is. But uh, on the blog, how about that? 20 books, 50 K. So Vegas this year, November, with the restaurants opening up and with Vegas being driven as they are because they need tourism or Vegas will die. You know, there's there's billion dollar properties. So they're going to figure out we have six months for them to figure out how to make this opening work, how to keep everybody safe, not just physically safe, but safe so they feel safe. And uh, hopefully we have a, a a treatment and that kind of stuff. Like I said, it's you know a little less than six months, but it's a lot of time between now and then. <clears throat> the uh, they're going to start opening. Uh, Sam's Town is currently off. I haven't been able to get a hold of anybody, but I have messages pending with them for when they come back in the office uh, for to see what's up. The uh, I, I'm expecting that we might have to reduce our capacity a little bit, possibly. But like you said, restaurants 50%, we can fit, we, we gauged our Vegas 2020 for 1,600 people. That was 1,100 in Sam's Live and 500 up in Ponderosa. And then we would separate between all the rest of the rooms. The overall capacity is like 2,500, 2,700 people. So we would only, if we went into all the rooms at half numbers, we would be fine. We would, we would be there, you would have plenty of space. But we were looking at how do we have as many people in that that main room when we start. So if they reduce that to 50 percent, how do we get 550 in there and then 250 upstairs and separate out? So this is something that I'm working through. 
I think we may be able to be fine. It just depends what happens between now and then. But definitely, the conference is going definitely. The majority of people uh, uh, are within driving distance. I saw the mayor, uh, it was uh, uh, MGM or the mayor, somebody said 50% of all visitors to Vegas drive there. So really? they're they're not as concerned about how many flights are being canceled because they can, if they can get to 50% of their visitors, and I think the biggest number of their revenue was in slot machines, and the slot machines in Vegas only have 50% at, at any time, 50% of them are, are being utilized. So if they remove every other slot machine to give people space, then they could increase their their utilization rate for the slot machines and make enough money that they're not going to go under because that's the big thing we're looking for is they don't go under so they can continue to host conventions. Samstown is going to be one of the first ones to reopen as a hotel and a resort because they're separate. The strip is going to come a little bit later. And this is, I I had heard that MGM is only doing three perhaps off the top, New York, New York, which is one of the ones I eat at fairly often. Mm -hmm. So, Yay team, not Aria, damn it, Bellagio, <laughs> and one more. I don't know which, I forget which was the third one. Was it Grand? Was it the, the MGM Grand? Or they're not going no, the big one think, yet? No, I don't think it's MGM Grand. Um, it, they were doing it from tiers, like Bellagio, top tier, New York, mm-hmm. mid tier. Might have been, then, I don't know who it was. The park? I, I don't know. No, it's not the park, okay. because yeah. I was really looking forward to that, mainly because it's air conditioning between me and breakfast, for me walking that mile. <laughs> And yeah. the summer is going to be so hot. It's like, oh. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, so. So Sam's, we're waiting. It, information is out. Uh, Lawrence has the question here. Uh, in July, due to PayPal policies. Well, the PayPal policy is, all I have to do is find how you paid, and it's one click easy on the refund in July. After that, after we go past six months, I can refund you, but it takes like six or eight clicks. It's I pretty much just have to pay you separately. And so it just becomes far more time consuming and painful, but I will do right by everybody. So please understand that I'm not going to bone anybody and I'll take what I, what I've spent. I've spent uh, 18,000 on swag and we'll set that aside for next year. We might mail it out, but understand that takes volunteers to pack label and mail. And so that means I would have to share people's personal addresses with a third party, this this helping crew. And I, I really don't want to do that. I know some people will say, oh, yes, I'll submit it. Well, not, now we're talking a whole other uh, uh, series of clicks and things to do. So now the time uh, to accomplish all this is is uh, becomes huge. It comes a huge investment in time, whereas I would rather invest that time to actually going to the show. And so uh, that's... Uh, I'm going, um, and uh, I, Michael's going. He's already there. Brian Meeks said he's coming to Vegas too. He's coming back, and uh, <laughs> and, and uh, the <clears throat> everybody I've talked with, I've I've reinforced that we will have the show. It's going to be far enough down the road that if if they are not having any conventions in November, that's because Las Vegas as a whole is going to be declare bankruptcy and go under. I don't believe that because they're all about figuring out how to make money through every other downturn. Yes, this is the worst one they've ever gone through, but but they're going to figure it out and they're going to come out they're going to come out of it strong. So anyway, uh, uh, Caesars Entertainment, uh, MGM, uh, watching their stocks closely, I may actually have to buy some uh, some uh, it's almost like buying tobacco stocks, right? Hey, I made a lot of money on tobacco. What the hell? What's wrong with you? I, I, I wanted to make money. Um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, maybe maybe something you don't want to advertise, but I could see buying into Caesars because there's a lot of great entertainment there that has nothing to do with uh, uh, with gambling. But the uh, <clears throat> the buffets, I think that will possibly significantly change because if they can confirm that you're not going to get coronavirus by touching the same utensil as somebody else, that you're only getting it via air or, or saliva swapping uh, uh, things, which which they haven't – actually, I've, every report I've seen said uh, you can't get it from a surface. You're getting it from the air. It's airborne. It goes into your lungs, and you're doomed. Now, you get it, and no, a lot of people well, recover. I mean, yeah, but so <laughs> flu. 
I mean, at, yeah. at the end of the day, I think that we're getting to the point, and this is not supposed to be a, a medical show anyway, so no, let's no, find no. some other subject. But it, I think it's too early to tell. I think we're going to need to yeah. go through another six weeks to find out what, how people mm -hmm. respond effectively <clears throat> to it. But I can tell you, my intention is to, to go eat and to be in casinos. I will sacrifice my potential future by testing out whether or not it works. <laughs> to, and just and just understand we are watching and i guarantee all the casinos are watching in order to see what what the reality is based on the science and how they can keep people safe have the lowest risk with the highest capacity we may find that come october there's no impact because hey nobody's nobody's dying they're able to treat it and, and i don't know I have faith in the smartest people in the world, all focused at one time on this one problem, and I think I think five months they're going to figure out a lot of stuff. Yeah. So well, they've, yeah, it, and they've been working anyway. Yeah. So how else? And, what else are we doing? So uh, so Sam, it, it's going. Um, keep rocking. We're we're and pressing forward that. with everything. But what about 2021 and 2022? We have uh, we have signed the contract. 2021. 2021 and 2022 is a, is a combo contract. So I had to sign both. Uh, please, once I, and you're going to hear it first right here when I announce it, please do not go over there and try to make reservations for, uh, uh, for 2021, 2022. We need to do that online. We need to get credit for the uh, uh, reservations because we have 5,000 room nights that we have to account for. Otherwise, our penalty for not filling the 5,000 room nights is one room night per sequence and that's five days so we need a thousand rooms and if we get uh if we don't fill all thousand then we have to pay the the one room night so that comes out to about a hundred dollars a a room in a penalty not not extremely prohibitive but we really need you to stay in a hotel stay in bali's with the rest of us because that's going to be the place to be come 2021 the dates i have them somewhere um, the dates are, you better give them, say. yeah, but you better give them something, dude, because yeah. already you just released something major. Yeah. You that's just huge. Yourself. Nah, nah, but, uh, don't, uh, <clears throat> and making reservations at Bali's don't do it until I tell people, uh, yes. Hey, Hey, oh, we're going to Bali. Stop it. Stop it. Relax. Cool. It's on the strip. It's cool. It's going to be good. Uh, we're going to gear up for at least 2000 and that's assuming we get the numbers we need to get. We'll have multiple rooms within the facility. We'll have a big exhibition hall in addition to the big presentation halls. It's it's going to be a way cool environment. The, uh, the the caveat on that is I get to do a visit in October, and then I can cancel the contract in entirety. So at that point in time, so right now I'm committed on paper, but I'm finally committed on October 23rd, I believe, is the date where uh, – I'm signed and I'm committed fully. So uh, that that pending the review, that's the final date. Come October 24th, I am on the hook for $1.23 million. So uh, I, I, I personally don't have that much money. Uh, uh, and uh, if I sold everything to include my my extra tennis shoes. So let's not, let's, not, let's have conferences and have a great time. But uh, the Bali's, <clears throat> We need the rooms. We need to stay in the room. We have a thousand rooms. Uh, we'll have two thousand people. It's the strip. Sure, you can go stay someplace else cheaper. The rooms are ninety-five dollars each. About one thirty out the door. The resort fee is only twelve bucks. I think uh, Sam's is getting us twenty per night for the for the resort fee. Yeah, so it's absolutely uh, cheaper going through twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Well, not yep. only that, but you wouldn't want to do it beforehand, regardless, because if if we look at everything at that time or Craig looks at everything and he decides we can't do it and, and he cancels, you would be on the yeah. hook potentially. Yeah. And just in general, please don't. This would be Don't a get a reservation ending. yet. Yes. It's it's the strip. You're going to have a lot of options in case you don't get a room in Bali's. You're going to have a lot of options. Yeah, they have and, more than uh, a thousand rooms, just FYI. Oh, oh we can put all 2,000 people in Bali's if we want, but we only committed to a thousand and actually, there's an additional out clause 30 days prior, depending on how many rooms. 
I can cut up to 20% and not be liable for them because then they'll open them up to general reservations after that point. So actually it's 800 rooms is the final, but a thou I'd like to see a thousand. I'd like to see everybody stay right in Bali's and then uh, the relationships, the access to restaurants, bars. Shoot it the night walked it. Places to, to hang out. Into pictures and video to Craig to go here, 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 here. And um, it really is. It is fantastic. I can tell you that much from from our experience from Judith and I walking down there. Judith uh, having no shame. If she was interested in seeing a room, she would just kind of find out if the door was unlocked. And the next thing I know, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that has been checked. It really is a fantastic. It will be a hell of an experience at Bali's. Yeah. And that's uh the staff has been great to work with so far. I've, I've, uh, they've given me uh, answers to a lot of questions uh, on the site visit. I just need to look at how we can hook up our AV and make that happen. But all of it, they're set up, their their contract, and then their supporting documentation is a lot more in-depth than what we got at Samstown. And Samstown, you really had to go visit and talk with them and then talk with the, the people who are setting stuff up <clears throat> in order to understand how everything worked at uh, Caesars Entertainment Group, because Bali's is a Caesars property. They have it all laid out. It's like, here's our contractor for AV. Here's what they do. Here's the things they'll be responsible for. Here's what you have to pay for, even if you bring in outside help. So all kinds of great options. And uh, and, and I'll be working with them through 2021 and 2022. So uh, uh, $1.2 million. <clears throat> But that's uh, come come October twenty fourth. That's what I'm on the hook for. So let's not uh, let's let's have great conferences, and uh, Vegas twenty twenty. Let's have a great show at Samstown. Uh, you'll be able to get there. How you get there may be hard, but still Monday we're gonna we're still counting on uh, industry day for all the vendors. We had one vendor pull out since we started, and that was a a third party. It wasn't it wasn't Amazon. It wasn't Apple. It wasn't any of the others. Uh, and, uh, we're right now I'm not, I'm not accessing the wait list at all. So we're down to, I think just under 1500 attendees as people have canceled, we're just under 1500. And I'm just going to dr keep drawing that down as people, uh, request refunds, decide that they can't come. Uh, we might lose all of our Australian contingent. We've already refunded our entire New Zealand contingent. And, uh, it, you know, that may be overseas across the board. If you live somewhere in, in Europe or, or or like South Africa, uh, you may not be able to come because you just can't get here from there, or you have to quarantine for 14 days. Now your 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 week long trick is trip is three weeks, and and nobody needs that. So just understand, we'll draw down until we know exactly what kind of capacity Sam's can handle for us, and then we'll we'll take appropriate action to make sure that we accommodate as many people as safely as possible. And then whatever whatever processes will be in fact, I, I expect there'll be hand washing stations. This is one thing Vegas announced: a lot more hand washing stations. Uh, poker tables would have two seats, is all, or blackjack tables um, instead of five. Uh, they'll have hand sanitizer everywhere. You'll have to get a temperature check before you go into the into the casino. All kinds of things like that. And Vegas will do everything they can to make sure you you aren't only safe, but you feel safe. Because that's critical if you're going to come there and and spend money. They want you to feel okay. And the, to the person who asked uh, about reservations, yes, Vegas actually is taking reservations. I just checked mm -hmm. on Sam's Town for something in June, and you can go to Sam's Town. It looks like you know if I filled it out, it would complete. I'm not going to do that. Sam's Town itself is a Boyd Gaming, and Boyd Gaming has something like 30 or 40 different um, properties, places yeah. around. Yeah, properties around the nation. So it's not like it's you know, only here in Vegas and Samstown is the only property that they have. That's not true. So, and it, it's also a locals place. So I, yeah. I would think that as soon as, you know, they have the opportunity, they would open because the locals who don't have to worry about getting onto a plane and getting here would in fact come. So we should, we should have some good knowledge by the summer. Yeah. Well, here's a question for you, Michael, because you, you did the walkthrough. Do you have to walk through the casino to get to the event rooms or guest rooms? There might be a separate way. I mean, we came in from the strip itself, and um, yeah, we kind of went around the casino. The casino floor is not, at least for the part I saw, was not that big compared to what you know I'm used to the Aria. However, there was very little smoke. You know, if if we felt there was a smoke smell, you could see the person smoking 
And this was okay. before this whole situation happened. So we were going through when Vegas was very uh, busy and we didn't. So it really felt like that this particular hotel had already upgraded all of their air. And then in the area of the um, location and uh, the event rooms, there's no smoking. There's no casino next to that at all. It's Good. it's way yeah. there's two different areas, both buildings and Bali's that we looked at. Um, I cannot remember the specifics of the second. I thought maybe we went up to the second floor, but on the first one, you walk into Bali's and and it's one it's that one that's like away from the strip. So you walk through a ton of restaurants. You got Giordano's, yeah. which is a Chicago deep dish. Which oh my gosh, that nice. helps you get through the first get through the first part. You got Wahlburger, which is um, the actors, um, you know, hamburger joint. There's a bunch of small ones that you might feel like you'd get if you were on the, the beachfront and you're getting a hot dog or something like that. And then you go through a walkway that's, that goes over where the cars come in and you go into the actual, you know, Bali's itself. And um, and then inside there, there are other restaurants. I sent you pictures, Craig. Do you remember uh, when I was looking at the pricing? Like the breakfast uh, pricing was 10 11 12 bucks. I mean, it was very um, affordable. But there are steak places just next door. It really is going to be a fantastic location related to the restaurants. Um, they have some some really nice restaurants inside the casino. But oh my goodness, there's just everything outside the casino if you don't don't want to eat there. You know, isn't so, there isn't there a steak place right out front? One of the five star. Um, well, there's a steak place in it that's okay. already, and then your cat a corner I think to to um, Bellagio. I think is uh -huh. where we're Catacorny to Bellagio, which means you're right next door to like Cosmo or across the street from Cosmopolitan. I'm trying to remember exactly where it is. We've walked over there so many damn times. Um, but yeah, there's there are uh, just so many opportunities. It's connect. Bali's is connected to maybe it's Paris, but you can stay yeah. inside, walk through all of the different shops, and go to yet another casino uh, with a bunch of restaurants. So. There's going to be so many opportunities from that perspective, and um, it, it's just it is really neat. We had to go bigger anyway, yeah. and staying still staying there and meeting the needs because I mean, folks, give it up. Craig does not only he says that he does a lot of work here, but he's the one signing these contracts. So you know we're doing our best to make sure that uh, we support him signing these contracts to the best of our ability by having a great show. It all comes down to the show. I, I think it's extremely low risk. I, I didn't tell my wife, um, but we'll, uh, we'll have a, a great show this year and then people will want to come. We are the show. We are the show on the street where everybody says, Hey, you have to go to this show. Yeah. So it just depends. We may open it up right now. I'd like to keep it specifically 20 books to 50 K, but we're, if we're at risk of uh, not hitting minimum numbers, then uh, we'll just open it up to, to a wider audience. The reason I don't want to do that is because the people in 20 books of 50 K know how to act and what we expect. As you saw from last year's uh, Vegas event, everybody was kind, no harsh words, no name calling, none of that. People were having a good time. People were getting along. <clears throat> People were getting something out of it because they understand it. this is us acting as professionals. Even if you've never published a book before, you're with us. You're, you're declaring yourself. I am an author professional. I'm a professional author and yeah, I have a self-publishing business. So this is this is the standard. If we just accept anybody, somebody might be like, hey, somebody carry me. All I want to do is write. Yeah, we have some of those folks, too. And coming to the show, you may find somebody who is like, man, the writing's just not resonating. But God, I love this marketing. Those are the team ups that are that are hitting home runs. And you, you pair up and you get to work and you go make magic happen. It, it helps it's a lot. Going to be, yeah. It it's going to be fun. Better. I'm getting excited again, even though I've taken you know time off, obviously, as we all have from traveling anywhere. Um, yeah. But man, I am excited to be able to go back to it. Uh, I am also excited because I have just found out here on the Craig and Mike show that I'm going to have breakfast at the Rat Pack area over at the golf course. Mike oh, just told me they're going today? to have it this morning today after this. So you know, hurry up. We I got places. Oh my God. To be. Yeah, we got places. To, no <laughs> shit. <laughs> but the, uh, I, got, but anyway, I, got a, I got a question go on screen. Will you be having a reader event in 2021, 2022? It depends on this year's. As far as programming for 2021 and 2022, I took Samstown requirements. We have 125 sessions, I think. 
and uh, and 1,600 people that we need to service. And, and we upgraded to 2,000 plus at Bali's. I really, we can go to 3,000 if need be. I really, 2,000, that's a, that's a reasonable growth. And, and it's nice to be able to scale up because I hate telling people, sorry, wait list, we're full, you can't come. Because there are people who really, really want to come and, and, and should come. So we're, we're trying to make that available. 2,000 is what we're shooting for. The programming for 2021, 2022, we'll start that after 2020 ends especially as I can start getting the guest speakers on the hook. Getting the highest end guest speakers takes time. It takes getting them committed now. So I've been sending the dates out to people. Hey, we're, we've got these dates. Would you like to come and speak to uh, the biggest self-publishing uh, author conference in the world? So no idea yet. We'll see how this year's goes. I think this year's going to go pretty well. But you need to say the virus has really boned everybody. And some people had to use all their vacation because they got laid off and they use their vacation to draw full pay. And now they don't have vacation left for November. I'm not knocking any of those people. You do what you got to do to take care of your family. And that's what we're doing as authors. We're writing books to try to sell more books and take care of our families. So Craig, what were you and I talking about? What part of the profession were we talking about even before we got on this show? Starts with an E, ends with an L. E, you got this email. Oh, email. <laughs> oh, you put, had me, man. <laughs> put it, put him in the spotlight. Everyone record that and send that shit out. Blank, so, blank, stunned yeah, really mullet did. look. <laughs> and yes, Elaine, because I have to answer this question. Bali's is part of Caesar's. Yeah. Do we have no brown M and Really, I thought it was a green in an M and M. But anyway. But <clears> yeah, we need way, more, just... No green M and Ms. Nobody going, be going crazy just because it's Vegas. We're not going to be and having as an yet. aside. I, I do want to talk to you, Vinny, at some point related to emails and stuff. So, you know, the next few weeks, if you don't hear from me, please reach back out to me. The uh, oh. so, so there's yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. You can say Th there's Vegas 20, 2020. Yes, we're having it. It may look a little different than you saw last year, obviously. Uh, and it may not. I, I don't know. I have high hopes that between now and then. The smart people are going to figure this out and figure out a way to make this, if it doesn't go away, to make it a lot less toxic and harsh on, on human beings. And then 2021, 2022, we're moving to the strip, baby. We're going to be staying at Bali's. We got uh, we got we have a good contract that benefits us beside because this uh, out clause, the six, $615,000 penalty fee if we cancel. And this is canceled at the last minute. It's kind of a it, it's six months prior if we cancel. It's shades of 600000 before then. But uh, if they cancel on us saying, hey, this uh, our building burnt down, we have to cancel, then they pay me 615000 oh, Guess really? what? Yeah, I don't want I don't want to cancel. I, I I'll take their money, but what I figure is that due to some circumstances, they'll say, "Ah, sorry, we can't pay you. Sue us." And I don't know if I have enough money to sue Caesars. Uh, I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I I'm pretty sure I to. don't. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I don't, and I don't want to. So we want the show to go, and nobody and everybody to have a great time, learn a lot, drive their businesses forward, which is what this is all about. That's what that's what we're doing. This is this is our part of giving back to indies. It's not because uh, we write, I write science fiction. Michael writes and manages a, a, a urban fantasy and science fiction and runs a say, publishing man. company. <laughs> What's that? I was, like, was going to say, man, was, I started out paranormal sci-fi and you, you keep throwing these urban fantasy. Yes, yes, we do a lot of urban fantasy, but man, my love is in paranormal sci-fi. It, it is. And, and you have done very, very well in that, uh, mm -hmm. in that genre. But now you manage a publishing company and this is yes. where Michael makes his money. He doesn't make money at the show. I mean, has oh, great rate, develops I'd great save relationships. money if the show wouldn't go on. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, what you, you the first year, what'd you lose? Like 40 grand? You're like, holy shit, I forgot to publish anything during these two weeks of the show. <laughs> well, it was oh more than God. that, but it's, it's you know, LMB. <laughs> it was it's more than that. Big, yeah, yeah, well, we, we got it so that, um, you know, Judith and I, because of Judith, the company has a CPA based here in Vegas, and there are multiple other well-known names who are coming to this agency now. And I was, I don't know, have I mentioned Craig that I, I, I've reached out to him and he's willing to talk if you, if you would like. Who's that to. again? Uh, our, <laughs> our, our CPA, our C, the, oh. the own, you know, the guy who owns the CPA company that we're a part of. 
Um, you bet. He already anyway. So where's that going with that? What the hell I, was I that? Don't know. Oh. All right, folks. I went on for the tangent. Uh, the CPA, you're going to have to help me. What the hell was I talking about? Paranormal sci-fi, I never heard of that. Um, Presentation for Vegas. Ask him if he wanted to come. Yeah, there was that too. But before that, I was actually on a roll before. I was like, oh, hey, you know, the next tertiary item that I really wasn't planning on speaking about. Um, yeah, don't. No, no, apparently I, I don't do not remember. Mm, that's okay. That's okay. But But Vegas, we're good. Everything's on track. I'm set to go in October. Uh, Bali's, yeah, they, uh, when you, when you sign, when you sign contracts worth more than a million dollars, Bali's takes good care of you. And now I'm, I'm their new favorite guy because uh, I committed to this and, and we don't know the risk is it's no risk. Cause in October I could say, Hey, the walkthrough didn't work. Let's start a square one. If the room prices drop through the bottom. So anybody can get a room for 50 bucks anywhere. That would be a pseudo risk. Because if uh, if uh, hotels are jonesing to get conferences in because this thing isn't necessarily resolved, then I can cancel at that time and say, Boop, not going to do it because I can get rooms 50 bucks elsewhere and MGM Grand wants to give me their grand ballroom for 100 grand worth of uh, catering. Well, then, you know, we, we might uh, cancel and shift. So we'll keep our ear to the ground and where we are. But that's but that's part of the risk is that this hundred dollar room might only be worth fifty dollars in twenty twenty one. Yeah, Judith, uh, thank you very much for reminding me. Uh, Judith Tabron, Tab Tabron. Uh, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So what I was saying, this is related to the losing money part of things that were going on. It got to the point where because we had the CPA, he was looking at our year over year toward the end of the year to find out where are we maybe high, where are we maybe low, and so they're doing an end of year adjustment. And he asked the question. And this happened to be about November 5th or so last year. You are like $30,000 low in entertainment and marketing expenses and things. And I'm like, don't worry about it. That stuff's going to be over in two weeks. It's we're, like, we're, we're good. Books is happening. Yeah. <laughs> That's where it was like, oof, no, no problem. Don't worry about yeah. it. We're good. <laughs> oh, my God. The magic credit card. I, I tell you what, my 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 love relationship with, uh, with Sam's Town I, I, got, I got up early every day. I, always, I check my finances every single day of my life just to make sure. Because first, I don't want anybody stealing my identity and and and, and locking up a bunch of money for, for no reason. But I check. And every day, Sam's Town is hitting me with, oh, here's 10000 extra dollars charged on your credit card. Oh, here's $5,000 extra. I'm like, uh, uh. so 30 grand. Yeah, little league. And, and then I find <laughs> out. And then I found out I overspent last year by twenty thousand dollars and then i'm like hey uh you know i wanted i, I wanted to clarify I, need, I said i need a final receipt they're like oh shit and it was january and sam sends me a note and says oh yeah here you owe five thousand dollars i'm like what the hell i'm like you think you would have gotten that before you know two months earlier but no they hadn't it was the final and i looked through and i'm like oh no kidding i thought i had paid this when i saw that uh hey here's here's what your final estimate is but they didn't really send me a uh an invoice. And so I'm like, holy crap. And then thank goodness, because they felt guilty, they actually knocked two grand off that final, that final bill. So it was 5,000 instead of 7,000. And uh, yeah, so I was only 25,000 over last year. But uh, it is what it is. We'll, we'll, we'll do better this year. We'll, we'll try to do better. <laughs> Uh, and, so, and by the way, when you try to do better, let's just throw a pandemic on the top of it because we're going yeah, to try yeah, let's to see <laughs> yeah. whether or not, you know, stress. Oh, my, my goodness, my goodness. But that's uh, oh, well, and, and the deposit for for Vegas 2021 and 2022, the deposit for Vegas 2021 is due. Yeah, no kidding. It's like three days before Vegas 2020, uh, 42,000. So I might open Bali's registration early just to offset those costs and then i'll cut it off until the new year because of uh, tax tax uh, uh purposes because if i open registration i get all this money in 2020 uh the irs will try to tax me on all this revenue that i didn't have expenses for so we're not going to go that route we're going to cover the uh, the the uh, uh the deposit and that's it. And then we'll open registration back up in January for everybody, because I think we'll be able to take uh, accommodate everyone who wants to come. And this is this is the goal. That's why we upgraded to a place that would hold up to three thousand people, 
because we had 1600 this year. It took us a full day to sell out, which is, you know, that's embarrassing, but uh, we, <laughs> And we have we have some 400, 500 on the wait list. So as people find out about the show and as people get excited about the show, friends of friends will be like, oh, man, I'm into self. I've written a book. What do I do now? Go to 20 Books Vegas. They'll tell you what you need to do. And they'll set the buffet for you. You get your big old plate and a dessert plate because you can carry two and uh, and fill them up and then go to go to work. Absolutely. Uh, the 30,000, <clears> we were just, uh, both of us were talking about different things. So the 30,000 on my side is the fact that we spend a lot of money during that week of 20 books, either providing opportunities for people or, you know, dinners or just whatever that is. Uh, we had a suite that um, some of the other companies used and we were being charged like Craig talks about. We had the coffee and the donut and all of that stuff. You know, you, you found Pepsi being offered in a Michael Anderley suite because I could not get Coke. Could not do it. Yeah, and the I theater tried. that that yeah, the theater was you another. Paid for. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So so we pay for a lot of these things like that theater you're talking about. We had popcorn provided. We had you know some of the things provided. It was a lot of fun, but that's LMVP and paying for it because there's yeah. no tickets for that stuff. It's yeah. Believe me, the 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 movie theater, which is separate from Boyd's Gaming, separate from Sam's Town, they weren't doing that for free. No. <laughs> so no. it was a great time, but the the. CPA on our side had plenty of money to delve into the expenses after the, the 20 books Vegas event. Yeah. Cause I, mean, when we go to dinner, I mean, I, I, I always volunteer to play almost always volunteer to pay <clears throat> and my parents are there. I make sure they don't have to pay for anything while they're there or my sister. And this year, Holy cow, it's going to be a Martell heavy event. Cause my, my, uh, my brother is coming. Uh, oh, my nice. aunt, my cousins, uh, are coming. So uh, got plenty. <laughs> there's going to be plenty of people with last name Martell at the show. Uh, I, they probably <laughs> might not, they might not put it on my, on their badge. Unlike my dad or, and my sister who put C Craig's sister and Craig's dad, they don't even go with their real names. Craig's so, dad. Hello, Craig's dad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're done talking about Vegas. We're talking about 20 books of 50 K and we are very close. A gnat's ass away. You knew a butt joke was going to get in there somewhere. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's ass exactly what I was thinking. Away from 40,000 members. Back in the old days, uh, I was one of the ones who said, hey, let's cap this at 500. There's, uh, you know, we, we've got a lot of uh, riffraff that's, and dead yeah, weight in books. here. Just the, and the then, 20 books Facebook group. Let's. Yeah, the 20 books of 50K Facebook group. And then uh, 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 when we hit 5,000, it's like, this is getting unwieldy. And this is there's just too many people, and uh, we should cap it at five thousand. Michael's like, listen, let's let's make it, and, and and Michael defined a better vision that says, hey, let's just put people put stuff into it, because previously, but when before we hit five thousand, we were doing newsletter shares and other things within the main thread, and Michael's like, let's refine this to, and and he didn't he didn't use the term buffet, but that's what he described is everybody can put in. Here's what's working for me. And, let, and then we fill up this buffet of, hey, Amazon ads, this is what I tried. It worked. Here's what the some keywords. And we'll set that. And then it'll it'll be able to support more and more people without having to moderate. And so so me and my infinite wisdom says, sure, I'll, I'll be an admin. And, and then took over the <laughs> admining of, of the whole thing. And now we're up to 40. Infinite, infinite wisdom. <laughs> almost 40,000 members. And, and it has been a, a magical ride. With yeah, the nice. people we've been able to meet, with the uh, 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 things that have happened with twenty books of the reputation, and this is this is something that we wondered uh, a few years ago with with drama that had uh, uh, tried to uh, taint the group, and since our our no drama policy, this uh, no bullshit, we're talking about the business, your business that you are in control of, and. Uh, we have weathered all of that so much better than professional organizations. And you can get 20 books to 50 K stuff, information from some of the heavy hitters in the business at no cost. We don't charge yeah. membership fees. This is us volunteers, volunteering information, volunteering time, and uh, me volunteering my entirety of, of my financial existence to uh, put on the line for, uh, <laughs> for to have 20 books to 50 K shows. But the show, there's absolutely nothing like a 20 books of 50K show. 
And this is, uh, we've been told that by people who are professional conference goers, yeah. that the attitude, just the, the way the attendees act and how kind everyone is. I mean, Sam's, they go out of their way because they said, this is the kindest group. This is the nicest people that we've ever had. And these are long-term Sam's employees. And, and uh, we're going to take that to Bali's and we're going to give them the same attitude that, hey, we're here to learn. We're here to have a good time. We're here to learn to manage our business. And nobody's judging us. Nobody's judging us for anything other than the car you drive. I mean, uh, then are are you are you working to be an author? And this is uh, this is what matters. Getting your book in front of people who are willing to pay for your work and help you, you know, pay for a restaurant meal, pay your mortgage, eventually pay your health insurance, pay all these other bills you may have. So if you're working full time, that's fine. You can be an author. There's a lot of people who are very, very successful authors who work full time, but you can add to that. How about that? Doing something you love and add a little bit to your your family's income month after month without having to learn it all for yourself. The ground zero approach, which is time, time consuming, because if you're working full time, your time is limited to commit to your self-publishing business. So this is 20 books of 50K. You come, you take what you want. There's no stress on, hey, you have to complete this course by X time. You have to do this. You have to spend money. No, you can get all of it. And uh, and and you're responsible. No one is taking credit for it. Michael Anderley is not jumping on, on, on my book saying, hey, I made him. Uh, look at these books. Nobody is taking credit for your work. So <laughs> normally so I'm this, going, Craig, why the hell are you doing that with me? Why aren't you doing that for <laughs> yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but the uh, and that's that's one thing that everybody's responsible, and we celebrate your success, Absolutely. hopefully as much as you do, because this is important to us that everybody's successful, because that pot, that pot of readers out there is enormous, and it's not there's there's no limit right now. There's no limit because they're looking for books that meet what they they want to read, so. It, it's not, if I win, that doesn't mean you lose. And this is the important concept that we take and carry forward. Rising tide, everybody wins together. And, and uh, you know, the, the readers are the final arbiter of your success. Are they paying for your books or not? So that's a, that's where we are. This is the, this is, we'll, we'll call it the PhD of, uh, of uh, self-publishing. Everything you need to know is right here, or we can help with uh, pointing you in a direction to help as well. And that is what's really cool. That's what speaks to a lot of the, the companies that are a part of this, especially whenever last year when we went, you know, year two, we had a nice little contingent. Practically no one understood that Amazon actually had a person there checking us out to see whether or not. When we went to the next year and Amazon brings 14, Google brings six, uh, Publishers Weekly brings three, Ingram uh, brings three. I mean, you're talking multiple billion dollar companies are checking out 20 books at a yeah. much bigger level. You know, Kobo, I, we could go on and on. Kobo's there, all of these names that are there. Yeah. And they all come away impressed. And and as Craig mentioned, these are people who you might as well say are professional conference goers. Some of them have been to hundreds of in writing or author conferences throughout their career. Yeah. yeah. And we had people impressed before we hit the stage that morning, people are, are talking to us, reaching out. Um, some who had a company that's been in existence 100 plus years in the writing arena are impressed because of you, because of what you were already excited about, because it's obvious that you love what you do. And all we're doing is helping and sharing at this point. A lot of sharing, mind you, but helping. But what we do not do, and, and, and Craig and I mentioned this probably two weeks ago, last week, is we're not here to do it for anybody. It's like, we really do believe, here's how you fish, now go do it. If you're hungry, you didn't go work it. If you had a problem because someone else's experiences didn't work for you, do you take the concepts of what's going on to help figure it out? Because it is a somewhat situation where you're painting by numbers, and if one of the numbers isn't coming in the color you like, okay, how do you figure it out? But if you can ask a logical question, you're going to get some support trying to help you figure out what that is. <clears throat> Impressed by the giant cookies. So well, that's, Lawrence is fixated on those giant cookies. And now that's, that's something that may change. They may serve you giant cookies as opposed to you taking giant cookies. So guilt 
might come into it, but I'm thinking, no, this is, if I'm next to Lawrence, we're both getting a cookie. So uh, it's a, uh, Hey, have you had Craig, have you had Lawrence on the show? I have not. I probably should. You probably should because Lawrence has um, a fantastic background of the, um, the, the traditional published back end. He's got a lot of mm-hmm. experience. It's all has a lot of really good contacts in that arena. But I spent two long nights, I'd like to mention long nights, having discussions with Lawrence about the indie area because he was, I don't want to say unbeliever because that has religious overtones, but he was very, um, he's a professor, (laughs) especially at that time. He was, you know, and and they question everything. And so it was a new beat because, uh, you know, this is back in Pittsburgh when Craig and I had gone to the CIFL conference back there and I, you know, we just went to help. That's it. You know, I had no, nothing else to do at Pittsburgh, but help because frankly, I didn't need anything. (laughs) So it's, it's, that's kind of where it goes. And, and I believe, you know, Lawrence's conversations with me for probably six hours over two nights. Yeah. Was a great experience for me to understand the hesitation and reservations of those who were embedded in the traditional uh, methodology and strategies and marketing of what came before to believe that there's something else. And I think that it would be a value because Lawrence will give you the pluses and minuses, I believe, of both ways, you know, from a different viewpoint. And I want to encourage people to realize that whether you're indie, whether you're trad, whether you're hybrid, we owe each other a lot. As an indie, I owe the authors who wrote fantastic stories and helped create a market for the kind of stories I like to write. Going on back, 30, 40, 50 years, I still owe them a little bit that, that, that yeah. they did this. And by the same to- token, some of those authors owe us now because we are keeping fans happy and ravenous for science fiction. They're not having to wait. And so we're building the market ourselves because jointly and communally, we are easily spending millions of dollars in advertising constantly on Facebook constantly on on Amazon, but predominantly the Facebook, I think, helps draw a new audience. And those new audiences we bring are helping other companies. So, you know, it, it, I really do not ever like to hear the thing us versus them anymore. The, the, The more I've studied the past, the more I understand, the more I realize we're all in it and a rising tide does lift all boats. The, uh, I, on Tuesday, I have Chuck Gannon, another 30 year trad pub author. And now he's full time. Uh, Lawrence worked full time and ha- and did trad. He published his books on the side. So uh, I've got Chuck Gannon on Tuesday to talk that, and he has a lot of insight into the movement of uh, a lot of trad authors, current trad authors, moving over to indie in a hybrid format. So uh, we'll be talking about that on on Tuesday. On Monday, I have Alex Newton talk it from Klytics. We're going to talk some numbers. Uh, he's going to talk numbers. I'm going to sit here and watch and look uh, contemplative and uh, and intelligent. <laughs> you do that very well. You that contemplative look <laughs> is very awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that's a uh, that's a that's what we'll be doing uh, next week. I've got guests through Tuesday. Hopefully, Michael can uh, stand in for me one day next week. Absolutely. Oh, the final challenge. Yeah, ask me though. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. took me up by telling me, "Oh, so can you do it Wednesday?" And I'm like looking at my calendar. Shit, can I do it Wednesday? The uh, and the final tally for the uh, the the Sky Roam, my my new internet, it it sucks for Zoom. It's it's unzoomable because it doesn't have enough throughput. But uh, last month I anticipated I was on track to spend a thousand dollars. I spent five fifty one. I got my bill for last month. I spent five fifty one. I bought the uh, Sky Roam for one nineteen. I paid three hundred dollars for six months of internet through the Skyrim. Now I won't get another bill from them for six months. And uh, so for what I expected to pay last month for last month's bill alone, I was able to get Skyrim. And so five extra months of uh, nice. internet off the Skyrim. And, uh, and now I have to use my expensive internet because uh, it, it does these, I usually jump in and out, but I was doing most of the talking today. Uh, if somebody's on a, on a, a long diatribe, I, I'll jump in and out. Uh, because I'll try to connect to the cheap internet as opposed to the expensive internet. It uh, it, it has saved. So going forward, uh, I'm going to save a fair amount of money thanks to, uh, on my admin, my overhead, because Michael hooked me up with the Sky Roam 
internet. <laughs> it's just one of those things. I'm like, it, it, one of the pithiest things in the world that I worry about for Craig is his internet usage, but it just yeah, seems to yeah. bug me. Um, so, uh, you know, I actually do not get any ad money for any supportive company like this, but it's been on my bucket list since I started back in 2015 that I would love to get advertising money from Coke. <laughs> so I, you know, it's one cool. of those things. Yeah. It's one of those things that you're like, you know, what's one of the stupidest goals you've made. I want to get <laughs> ad money from Coke, but it's yeah. true. I don't really mention it, but it, I do love Coke. Um, yeah. And, and so I, you know, I've done a lot to help ferment and ferment or whatever the, uh, the fun of, you know, Ford versus Chevy, Coke versus Pepsi, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then of course, every single time I do this, there is at least one person going, Dr. Pepper rules. <laughs> and so, but you, you, you would have a Dr. Pepper in front of a Pepsi. Yes, I would. Now I'll drink Pepsi, you know, it was full confessionals. I don't in know why crunch. I'm feeling this way. Yes. In, in a crunch, I will drink Pepsi because I need it. <laughs> I need a cola with sugar and caffeine and my body. So, and if that's the worst drug that I'm using at the moment, great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, but I do kind of feel like um, it was brought up the other day. It's like we're going to house a story in Georgia and you have almost have to say, like John Ringo did, the country, not the state, you know. And so yeah. it, it's it's mm, I have to have a cola, whatever, you know, yeah. Coke versus Pepsi. But anyway, who? There yeah. We go. Yeah. So you're a Coke stoner. I was thinking about, uh, oh, I was, that's what it was. I was going to say, <laughs> I'm, I'm got to go get a Coke. I'm referring to the cola, not the white stuff. Yeah. 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 The. Uh, because I, I, I went and got groceries this morning. We did pick up at, at 7 a.m. I was the only car there. It made it really easy. And uh, I was thinking yeah. I got to have a weed shop two minutes from my house. I have to drive by the weed shop to go into town. <laughs> and and I'm looking. I'm like, we drove past it yesterday. And it was the parking lot was completely packed. And I'm like, we used to call those people stoners. Now, uh, now it's like, hey, it's cool. It's Citizen. happening. Uh, why aren't you? Oh. <laughs> Martha Carr was talking about this. So she just casually mentioned she was out in her backyard and she's smelling some weed, some pot smoking. I go, really? Now, I come from Texas. That's where I was born. That's where I was raised. But I haven't lived in Texas for two or three years. And during that time, Las Vegas has gone all OK on pot. So I go, so I, I didn't realize Texas had gone all in on pot. She goes, oh, it hasn't. It's just in her upward, mobily, wonderful neighborhood that she lives in. Pot's a normal thing. Just go outside, smoke some pot. And I just, I find that intriguing to know. It, it, maybe maybe law enforcement just said, we're not going to enforce this stupid shit anymore. This is what a waste of time. But the, uh, yeah, up here, weed. <laughs> it's, it's okay. So I, every time we pass the shop, I'm like, weed. I, okay. My wife's probably really tired of it. <laughs> like butt, <laughs> just saying. So real quick, a uh, Facebook user, please sign in next time so I know who to um, I'm communicating with. But actually, Big Red. If you're going to ask me what's my favorite drink, it's going to be Big Red. It comes out of Texas. It's based out of the Dr. Pepper. So, you know, there we go. You paid, like, Cola, technically. you paid like $6 a can for a six-pack uh, that you found there in Vegas. Well, it was two and a half. Yeah, I paid for six-pack. I paid 15 bucks for six bottles this size uh, at the CVS. Who We went there, and they go, really? We just got rid of that Big Red because we weren't selling them quick enough. I'm like... Because there's no one on the strip. And now they haven't returned it. And I'm like, gosh, ah, I would have bought it. Too just slow. Told me. Too just told slow. Me, I would have, you know, yes, absolutely. <laughs> would have filled up a closet with them. Oh, goodness. All right. So what, we, we probably have some self-publishing stuff to talk about. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, well, we're here to just have fun. Yeah. So different yeah. things. So email. We The reason that you and I were talking email was that... Um, you know, backlist and everything else. As LMBPN continues to grow, we have a substantial backlist now. Um, in fact, Mike Bray, who built his whole company on backlist, but a different methodology. Um, and, and I was talking to him. And because we keep releasing front list, your backlist is going to atrophy. But that doesn't mean your backlist has no value. It actually has quite a bit of value. And so if you do take the time to re-send your email and do some two fresh ads on this, you might have money waiting in the wings just sitting there because people are willing to read your stuff. And we'll see whether or not, you know, you might have some time. Like, did you write something where all the phones were dial-up phones? You might as well call it history. 
at the moment. But you were speaking about this, Craig, that your backlist is being or your income is also being driven by some backlist items. And, you know, you've got a healthy backlist. The uh, one, of, one of the big things to recognize, and Joseph Alexander brought this to, to my attention, was every new subscriber to your news, newsletter may not have entered where you started however many years ago. So every new subscriber is an opportunity to, to explore your backlist. And this is, this is the key point. And if you automate your, your onboarding sequence enough, people, where did you enter the, the Craig Martell universe? And if they say, oh, here, oh, hey, I recommend this. You, if you like this, then you might like this. And, and you're okay, you're not, you're not a weirdo if you say, well, if you like Craig's free trader series, you may like his End Times Alaska series. Oh, okay. I mean, just comparing, hey, these two are written similarly. If you like End Times Alaska, that's the only series I have written first person. But if you're willing to go more post-apocalyptic, I have this series or this series or this series. I have a number of post-apocalyptic series um, <laughs> the, <clears throat> that actually are very apropos and selling quite well right now for some <laughs> odd, un, un, ungodly reason. There's no zombies. I think that's uh, probably the big selling point. But but those uh, new readers are new potential to show, hey, you're here for a reason. It might be you like this one book. Here's a lot more that I have. Please uh, please pick and choose wisely and, and enjoy the ride. So this is the thing, and I am making the majority of my money off backlist right now, <clears throat> and I expect that to continue. I'm advertising my backlist because I always advertise the first books in series. I just upped my spend, <clears throat> which I didn't tell Michael this. I just upped my spend to approximately, it tripled it to approximately 9,000 on ads this month to try to drive that revenue and see if I can scale and get that that comparable scaling, uh, get get off the 20 grand a month uh, plateau and climb up to that 30 grand a month at an additional five grand or six grand of, uh, of ad spend. Yeah, so we're that's seeing a lot of benefit and it is a situation where once you get to a certain level i look at us uh, publishers as financial companies to some degree and so we're we are heavily looking into what is it going to take uh i would not be surprised and that by the way i haven't sat there and, and considered the ramifications of all, all of this so don't go off on a tangent on me but i would not be surprised to find that if that within 36 months we'll be at a hundred thousand and, and spend it in a month I would not be surprised. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if we weren't there either, but I can see the numbers and I can see yeah. the, the benefits. And um, so in three years, you know, at that time, we'll have another thousand books probably, yeah. you know, in the company one way or another. So we'll be, you know, knocking on 2000 books in a, in the company. So when you're doing that, it's, it's not that surprising to, to understand what we're accomplishing now. Anything could change. AMS ads could once again, go through the roof. Well, yeah. you know, if their effectiveness isn't good enough, then we won't do it. But we're constantly trying new marketing. So our ad spend is in AMS and Facebook. Um, but we're now advertising in German, the language and the country. Um, and that, you know, ad spend is going to continue. <clears throat> our audio stuff, you know, we're going to continue advertising into the area. It's not a large percentage of our company at the moment. However, it needs to go up. And yeah. as I bug Mark Dawson more, which I realized I should have done that this week. Um, but as I bug him, it's like just putting that little uh, let, that, that little thing in his ear about, okay, what about audiobook advertising? What what are you guys doing about that? Uh, yeah, for audiobook is separate ads. I mean, that's a, that's an important and and viable market if we can figure it out. Because I've got I've only got like fifty or sixty audiobooks that I need to uh, sell at a much higher rate than I am now. So the. Uh, you want to speak to Vinny O'Hare's comment real quick, and then I'll answer. Um, it, deliverability. Yeah. I think MailChimp has suffered significantly from not being able to adjust. It's uh, where a an email recipient thinks your email is coming from, because once a newsletter service is getting tagged as, as a spammer, in a relative sense, not spam, but uh, newsletters and stuff that uh, they'll send the, uh, an auto redirect from your inbox to a spam folder, then they've got to be able to adjust on the fly. Auber, uh, I think uh, Sandbox has figured... What's that? I think it's Aweber. Aweber, not Auber. I think it should be Auber. Um, Auber. They should, they should, they should <laughs> There's Auber. an E in there. 
A W E E E E. How do you how do you, how do you spell awe? I am in awe. A Weber. Aw, aw, aw's A W E Auber. That's how you're A W E. Damn it. <laughs> I still think it's A Weber. <laughs> I'm about Weber grills. Weber grills, and I go A because, Weber. I mean, I'm because from like, a, come on, we're grilling. Yeah, from a marketing perspective, you really don't want to go three syllables on your name, or or five or six. So uh, we're oh, gonna go with on. Auger. If, if if you were in the email marketing back when A Weber came up, there was none of this heavy marketing understanding that we didn't have that crap at the time i love the thank you so much for adding the the questions so did you yeah. finish the one with Vinny? because i've got to ask answer now we're good we're good but just understand that deliverability you can have a hundred thousand people on your list but if you're only delivering one person or one percent you might as well only have a one thousand person list that you're paying for as opposed to a hundred thousand you want that deliverability uh, can, can people see this this <laughs> we're doing oh, some yeah. testing my God, this that's massive. Is, uh, exactly, this this is massive. So, um, if you've received the emails from certain um, from Ingram talking about their POD is taking longer and longer, I received two of those emails in the amount of time it took us to to put our POD order, get an email, get an email, actually get the book. So I don't know how many weeks we've had this in production, trying to see what we would do or what does it feel like to have uh, this type of huge book in our hands, and the answer is horrible. <laughs> in in short, this feels like a textbook. Um, so, Jeez. so uh, our first in my hands book related to a larger one failed miserably. <laughs> so, um, so we're we're trying to do this, but it's just really slow right now on the paperbacks, on the hardbacks. Um, you know, what are we going to do? So, yes, I I've been since 2016 trying to figure out how to beat the uh, paperback market into submission, and um, I thought I had it two years ago, failed. Thought I had it again last year. Found out that that what things that were told to me, um, at least the way I understood them. So I'll take full blame on misunderstanding was not accurate. So we have we are testing things LMB in LMBPN. Have I? There was another question. Oh look, yes, Michael's right. A Weber. Thank you very much. Uh, there was another question that um, thought about even the company the is platform. wrong. Think think <laughs> Auber. Oh, that, 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 that's awesome company, sounding. No, there, that's an objective measurement awesome of accuracy. Awesome sounding. The company is the final decree. Um, awesome. But yes, I've also thought about, you know, what would it take do you to say GIF? platforms? I do you, or do GIF. you say GIF? Yeah, say GIF. and the designer said GIF, and he's wrong. It's GIF. So yeah, anyway. Well, I know what's right, but I know Auburn. what, you know. It. <laughs> so, but going back to the platform situation, that is a very complicated, when you go through the aspects related to the business itself, you have to start looking at what's the value for that 30% that Amazon brings. What's the infrastructure? What's the support? What are the headaches? What are the, and while I've thought about it, I recognize that there's so many headaches that I just tell Amazon, take my money, just yeah. please, or Apple, please take my money. Speaking of Apple, did, uh, did you guys notice that Apple has a new Apple books for authors? website. I put a post up in 20 books. I would really appreciate it because uh, if you see that post or go to it, check out the new Apple site. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. There, um, I, I have somebody to speak to to let them know updates of what the author community really thinks of the new Apple books for authors. I was surprised um, to find out some of the things. I did not know. And by the way, we are predominantly KU. So uh, but we are wide. We're pushing Opus X wide. We're learning the market. Something I, in five years, I never knew Apple paid in 45 days. No, I didn't know I, that. Yeah, yeah. So, 45 days and 70% on all prices. Yes, all prices. Very similar to Kobo. Kobo, um, you yeah. hear Mark Leslie Fave talk about that, that they, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter, 1999, which frankly, I'm getting pinged right now. We have books in Amazon at 1999. And I get the same price as 10, but the tactic is because we're going after the Kindle Unlimited. Yeah. And, you know, we're not going to screw the, the fans too much because those books that we have in there at that price is worth approximately $34, yeah. you know, if you just buy them individually. So they're still getting a, a, a good deal. But if I can persuade them to go into KU, I'd, I'd prefer that. Um, so anyway, that's it on that one. I'm sure that... Um, we will make additional efforts to understand if you think about it from Patreon or you think about GoFundMe or you think about anything like that. We've for three, two to three years, um, we've been looking at building our own apps. Uh, I'm XIT, X 
uh, database, ex software developer. Stephen Campbell, who's the VP of ops for the company, is ex um, CFO for companies, ex entrepreneur who's had multiple IT kind of based companies. So it's not that we don't have the skill set and the knowledge, but we look at it and we go, what are we making money on now? What is the risk to try to go into this new paradigm? And the answer is too much. You know, go after the, the challenge that a lot of us have when we get success in publishing, frankly, is believing everything we touch is gold. And that's not the case. If you go um, or we look into some area like we really want to do games because we play games all the way. It's like you're a publisher, not a game master. And if you would like a really good way to provide money for somebody else, that's going to a new area. Ergo games that you don't understand when you're not financially capable of doing it. One of the biggest things that that people did not understand when they followed LMVPN into the big massive universe methodology and, and mo mode or model uh, business model was how much money we had to play with and lose every month. And we did, by the way, learn. There was a lot of learning. There were six figures of learning as we built this, but we could afford it. You know. Yeah. And and ergo, it people was, don't know it. So it's mm -hmm. it still was painful, and that's yes. uh, as, and especially as as painful as the money loss was, it was also the realization that holy shit, this is complex, and can cost you a hell of a lot of money with zero return. That's when when we're talking ramping up ad spend, it's an educated guess that we're going to be able to ramp up our revenue as well and increase. And if we do get a two to one, we're talking doubling our our profit. So. These are these are educated guesses. We kind of know what we're doing, but going into paperbacks and then dis, uh, distribution centers and and how do you work on storage and and uh, other other things that how can you get economy of scale and and business stuff that as you start dissecting it, you're like TradPub did about the best they could with what they had with their their distribution system, extremely cumbersome, but all of the moving parts that it was created to support. It's they did what they had to do to get the books in people's hands. And there's a lot of people touch it in between the author thinking, hey, I have an idea. And then the book actually being on that shelf at Barnes and Noble. There's only like 100 moving parts between there and and getting that book. And only about four or five of them are write the book. All the rest are this distribution system and ordering system and fulfillment system and returns. And it, it's it's a, it's a huge, huge problem to crack. And if you look at the uh, as, a, as a business consultant, one of the terms we always used was core competency. Michael Anderley's core competency is ebooks. KU, some audio, it's ebooks. That's 85, 90% of the company is, is ebooks. Um, yeah, it's getting less now, but you're yeah. right. Paperback is not it, but paperback is a large market. So, yeah. you know, I'm willing to go into and break into it, but it's going to be on my terms. That's right. That's and right. I, and I do not and will not play by the other rules that have been around, frankly, for almost for 80 years. I'm not yeah. doing that. I yeah. will use what's there. I will use the infrastructure, but I will put it back together in such a way that it's going to make a lot of people money, including ourselves. Yeah. But I'm not going to suffer the risk. I'm not doing that. That's pitiful. So one per, mm -hmm. another person asked uh, Justin again, have you looked into owning your own print on demand? I have absolutely looked at our own print on demand. The coffee, I've talked to Mark Leslie Lefebvre. And if you have interest, then absolutely talk to Mark because he has so much knowledge about this area. But I've looked into it. It's they're, the seventy to $100,000 for the actual product itself. And what Craig had mentioned before, then you have overhead and you have people and you have ink and then you have, it breaks down and then you have to do shipping. Why would I do that? You know, I, I personally have always loved the publishing from the standpoint of what's on my warehouse shelf, nothing, a couple of hard drives. That's what my cost is. Now, I happen to have fantastic computers because I can afford them and I've been blessed and I work my ass off <laughs> yeah, and I do. love technology. So I get to afford, but but I have no warehouse space to speak of except one, you know, thing over at U-Haul where we've stored a lot of Craig stuff in our own. Um, Michael stuff. Michael stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of Michael stuff. Um, <laughs> but so I've looked at a lot of these things and I, and I find it fascinating to talk about them. But until I locate a true 
methodology to allow us to facilitate what we know that is predominantly digital or using other services and services that don't expand. Because let's say, for instance, I wanted to and I sold a thousand books. Well, there's one methodology in which Joanna Penn uh, talked about. I didn't read it, but I saw her, her blurb about pre-selling the books to businesses. You know, there's multiple different ways to do this. One of them is you go to and sell advertising space at the beginning of the book. And let's say that <laughs> Mike Bray is going to give me shit for this. But let's say that uh, you, you pre-sell that advertising space and you're going to give these thousand books to, let's say, the military. Well, you already have to know where is that where are the, where's that um, FOB location for your thousand books, and then you pre-sell the books, and then you know with advertising, and then you actually are able to make sure that you know where it's going to go. So you print it, you print the advertising, you collect the money from the advertisers. It's it's all paperwork at that point. There's no warehouse that receives your crate o books or your yeah. pallet o books. You know, so there's other strategies that are out there that can really move us forward and facilitate and help. You know, one time at LMBPN, because we have a great fan who was on submarines, um, I think he's either on his last or, or he, no, he's done. He's he's done his last under the ice cap effort. But before they went, you know, he would pop every so often and go, hey, what's going on? You know, and it would be interesting because he's coming up. And when they, you know, when they get above now, they get Internet again. Otherwise, they've yeah. been pretty dark and deep. Yeah, and um, what we did is we created a um, an FTP site. It's like, holy crap, you're leaving in two days. Okay, here's what's going on. We're gonna build this right here. We're, we threw I don't know 60, 70 books on there for them, and said, here they are. You guys download them and share them. Just as many as y'all yeah. can get before you go. And so we've done different things like that. So we understand going to the military, but we were trying to give away Kindles. We were trying to give Kobo devices. They make it incredibly difficult to do that. <laughs> yeah, you can't you know? mail them overseas. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Right. And so, you know, I, I would like to help a lot of others, but related to the print on demand coffees we and, and others, we've looked at it, but we do realize why try to beat the system when Ingram has it there built for you. If yeah. you go back to the history of Amazon, you're going to find out that the POD services are Ingram services. Amazon was built on Ingram at that time. Yeah. And from what I understand, a lot of create quote create space is still Ingram. So they only have yeah. so much capacity and then they're going to outsource it to Ingram. So if, yeah. why do that? If Amazon's willing to do it, you should probably be willing to do it too. Yeah. There's end of that rant. <laughs> and, and, and military, I sent a, I sent a box of books out to a, one of our uh, uh, Amphib carriers and uh, so I got a picture of here's here's some of my books on the deck of the USS Iwo Jima, the new one, not the old one that I rode. But the, so that was that makes a cool picture that I pop up every now and then. And uh, just the price of here donating these to the the on ship, the onboard library. All right. It's we've been an hour and 12 minutes. So uh going to going to rock on and declare victory. I've got a book to Ooh. write. That's a, a terminal state. I always have a book to write. I am 48,000. I'll hit 50,000 words on Bad Company 7 today. The 19th book in the series that Michael asked me to write in September of 2016. The 19th book in the four book series that Michael asked me to write. So uh, <laughs> here, here we are. I and did not a, expand. And this is the last I one. Did. 19 <laughs> books. All right. Look, I'm guilt. I'm not guilty of the eleven or what nine, whatever many books. And in the first part of the series, that went from four. That was you. I am guilty for the bad company. And, and you're I'm like, no, I'm you're terribly sorry. <laughs> you're guilty of all of it. On the, but you're also <laughs> guilty of of uh, paying me six figures a year since we started writing together <laughs> with uh, with from our shared royalties. So darn the the horrible okay. things that you're guilty of. So. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. I appreciate you uh, bringing me on board. I appreciate 20 books to 50K, the creation and support of what we're doing for the indie community, the uh, uh, everybody giving, rising tide lifts all boats. We help each other. <laughs> you don't have to lose for me to win. So, uh, Okay, but as we go, Facebook user, whoever this is, you might as well make it a clean 20. <laughs> Instead of 19 books, go ahead, one more. <laughs> well, if you count the spinoff, that would be 28. And that spinoff well, is, is continuing to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get to 30. 
It's a, yeah, yeah, 19. We're ending at 19. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for that good laugh oh at the very God. end. Everyone have a wonderful weekend. It's been fantastic. And, Mike, I'll see you at breakfast. And uh, thanks, everybody. We will uh, no show tomorrow. Taking the day off writing. Uh, Sundays are good, productive days for me. Monday, we'll be back with Alex Newton at a different time. We're early, way early, because he lives in Switzerland. So uh, uh, we're talking Switzerland at 4.30 a.m. my time, 5.30 a.m. Michael's time. So Michael won't be catching the show live, I, I suspect. And uh, it'll be early UK. We're treating you. We're treating you tomorrow to a good uh, early afternoon show or, or on Monday to an early afternoon show with uh, Alex Newton. Tuesday, we got Chuck Gannon, and then we'll line up some other guests for the rest of the week, depending if Michael can hook us up with Wednesday or Thursday. And Michael is off to breakfast at the golf course. That is going to be way cool. Enjoy yourself, and we will talk to everybody.